As states and militaries have recently faced a backlash in public opinion over wars in far-off places and the suppression of civil, civil liberties at home, they have sought to invade our imaginations through films, computer games, sports and social media. Recent documents reveal that the US military has worked on over 800 uh, major movies and more than 1,000 TV shows. And in 2002, the US Army even made its own computer game. And all of this sits alongside the military's daily use of press offices and the sponsorship of events like the Super Bowl, uh, Armed Forces Day, the X Games, and this year, for the first time in history, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. One solution that we're going to talk about here today is perhaps to fight fire with fire and use art and use popular culture to highlight how horrific, how brutal, how boring, how stupid and how ridiculous war, militarism and the arms trade are. I originally thought I wanted to go into advertising and um, uh, I studied it for, for a while and I kind of after a few years realised that was an actual terrible idea and advertising is just this machine for creating human misery and sh taking stuff from one hole in the ground and putting in another hole in the ground and making money in between and my um, but when it comes to actual like military uh, recruitment advertising it, it feels a lot more nefarious because the worst thing that can happen if you get duped by an advert for a product is you buy something that's like a kind of slightly more expensive brand over a generic rival or you, you think that uh, uh, you kind of for a moment think that a new phone is going to make you more creative or a car is going to make you more popular but if you get recruited into the armed forces through their advertising the worst thing that can happen to you is you lose life or limb um, in pursuit of the UK's resource wars. The British military actually has its own toy range now uh, called um, HM Armed Forces and it, it gets a full page in the Argos catalogue every um, every year, every Christmas. So I thought it'd be good to take that idea to its logical conclusion. And, um, and they did these. From doing them as the actual box toys, I uh, decided to try and turn them into uh, uh, these video adverts for the toys using child actors. And this is a, this is a, a, a shot from it. Um, and we did that, that with Veterans of Peace as part of a campaign to try and raise, the, raise awareness about the uh, the fact that the UK still recruits 16 and 17 year olds and you can actually uh, start applying for the British Army at 15 and 7 months uh, with your parents permission. The more recent projects I did was uh, I designed these uh, uh, become a suicide bomber uh, a recruitment sh uh, campaign for the Royal Navy. We kind of regard the Muslim extremists in the uh, 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 terrorists as being um, kind of beyond the pale in their like uh, disregard for human life, where we're actually also willing to commit suicide. Uh, the British government says it will actually use a first strike to defend our national interests, which isn't even, you know, what does that mean? And they refuse to define our national interests. Well, somebody printed them and uh, put them in bus stops around uh, London. I'm a photographer and obviously the problem with photography is it's all about showing stuff that's visual. You know, what's the problem with these kinds of uh, subjects, these kinds of issues, they're often very much like conceived to be invisible. The way these fairs often work, they're trying to exactly avoid the kind of visibility that a photographer like me really needs to work, you know. You know I tend to employ kind of not very traditional photographic ways of working which often involve reusing existing imagery from all kinds of sources. So I've just finished a two-year project on um, basically on intelligence agencies, which you can imagine they're not going to let me in anywhere near them, in fact. Um, so you have to get quite creative in terms of how you're going to explain what these kinds of uh, fields and industries and organisations do. Because um, I think, for me, that's what a big part of what our job is, maybe, is to kind of um, partly to capture people's imagination and get them excited and engaged with these issues to make them see that they're important and they're, you know, they're worth doing stuff like this about um, and maybe also a little bit to slightly remind the kind of people in there that you know we're interested in them and we're, we're not kind of uh, okay with what they're doing. So what we do is we take press imagery, we take um, how it's been presented in the mainstream media 
and um, we re-articulate it. With photo op, which is the one of Tony Blair in front of the explosion, we're able to reframe his position. He is such a smarmy and like that's his big smile thing, like the way he presented the legitimacy of going into Iraq. Our go-to place of resources is always what's actually been put out in the mainstream media and how to subvert that by just flipping it. This is a sort of anti-war artwork in itself, this amazing gazebo thing with the pouring rain and the Daleks being arrested. I mean, the whole thing is an unbelievable performance of, of dissent from all the horrors that are going on in Excel building. Um, so, and that sort of, to me, shows that the, there's many different ways of protesting. Um, the, way the work we do, it, it's really to, to show what the images that we're getting bombarded with all the time and then to displace them, to cut them, to do violence to them, to show what's actually going on, to show the victim and the victimizer, to, to, to bring things together. That's, the, that's what montage is about. It's coming up to 80 years since the bombing of Guernica, which was the first real carpet bombing of civilians. And Guernica itself is an amazing piece of work. You see it, you see images from Guernica um, in, so in Tahrir Square, you see it in all over the Middle East on demonstrations, you see it here on demonstrations. And, um, and as we know, it was, there was a version of it that was up in the United Nations um, when Colin Powell read his paper about going off to bomb Iraq. So they, so they put a, a, a big blue curtain in front of it. And the, the UN PR woman said, no, yeah, we, we didn't like the horses in the picture. Nice. That was her line, yeah. <laughs> that image is about the victims. There's the, all the, the faces in the faces of the women, there, they are being bombed from above into this space. When you make political work, you can't measure the results. Um, it's, it's something that goes on for, it's something Breck talked about, he said that he talked about a drip of water going onto a pebble and then after 400 years there might be an indentation in the pebble. Someone who might see army recruitment adverts and they might see your piece and somewhere in their brain there's some critical edge has been built up because they've seen your piece. I mean that's that's the area that one's working. It's like with the Action Man films, I, uh, a teacher came up to me recently, I was doing a stall and he was saying he'd been showing it to his his students, so I think they're like 14, 15, and he said a couple of them had, had spoke to him afterwards and said that they'd been thinking about joining up and they were like, they, they, they definitely really they went into it now and it was like, <laughs> it's it it so good, you know, just... Um, um, the militaries and corporations both know that um, by targeting children, they can guarantee um, adults to be uh, kind of sympathetic or uh, to their brand. It's doing this project, uh, Thomas the Tank and Friends, and it's uh, basically Thomas going to war and um, I think it's very optimistic about the, the whole endeavor until he gets gets hit in the side with a shell and he can feel and hear his crew burning alive inside his, inside his body. Okay, so you go to dark places as well. <laughs> <laughs> but still wrestling with that a little bit about if it's you know if it's um, appropriate or not there's that book um, that war against war the, the first world war book where it's, it's all photos that nobody had seen from the first from the front lines and th there's this sanitized version of the first world war which is like our boys kind of you know fighting in a field somewhere and then these are actual horrific bits of bodies and you know stuff like that and sometimes it just really feels like it is necessary and th th that's the only way that you can feel the horror of those situations is I mean there's so many multiple perspectives looking at the imagery that we make now so how does an image that we make from our perspective of safety in East End London relate to um, someone who's looking at it in Syria I, mean, what, I suppose we make I make this work because I believe it's, it does have an incredible power it's just putting it out there just being here it's 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 part of the, yeah. the, the, the slow process, really. Yeah. Yeah.